I think the best way to introduce force is to just go through Newton's laws of motion. So rather than give my simple, plain spoken definition of the laws, I'm going to give you what you would hear on the street. If you just went up to someone and said, what is Newton's first law? This is what they would say. And then we'll clean it up a little bit. We'll add a few more details to make it technically good enough. They would say this. An object in motion remains in motion and an object at rest remains at rest. Close quote. So two little details I would add. One would be um, on the, what does it mean to remain in motion? We'll say with constant velocity. All right, so just to be clear what remains in motion means it's not speeding up or slowing down. Right? And then the other thing I would add is, um, unless acted on by a net external force. That is the one thing that will make this no longer be true. So you can get Newton's first law, or you can see it just by looking at Hal here. Hal's sitting here, and he is, let's see, it's at rest, and he remains at rest. So nothing happens, right? And if Hal's in motion, he remains in motion, unless I stop him. So my hand is the external force that is changing his state of motion. Right? So that one uh, is easy to confirm. Now, let's look at Newton's second law. If you went on the street and said, what is Newton's second law? I guarantee you the response would be F equals MA. And if they're really with it, they might say, be sure and put vector symbols on top of that. There you go. F equals MA is just the way it would be said. F equals MA. Um, the only thing I would say is, um, I would add is don't forget they are vectors. Two of them are, um, F and A. And they sum. So you really have to get the total force, the sum of all the forces equals mass times acceleration. So that's what I would add. There you go. And what F equals MA means is if we're going to have an acceleration, if we're going to change our state of motion, it takes a force. And how much you change it depends on the mass. F equals MA. OK, we're not going to do the third law for now. What we're going to do now is give a plain spoken definition of those two things. So force. Force, I would say, if I had to give it a definition, I would say a mathematical push or pull. That's really all it is. We will get deeper into interactions, and what causes force, and blah, blah, blah. But really, it's just a mathematical description of a push or a pull on an object. And it's in a unit of kilogram meters per second squared. You can kind of tell from here, that's kilogram meters per second squared. Or that's also referred to as N for Newtons. So the unit, the MKS unit of force is named after Isaac Newton. Let's define mass. This is a little risky. Mass. So mass at this point, this is our simple definition, is a property of matter, a property of matter that tells how much 
something accelerates under a given force. That's it, and it's in kilograms. Now you're saying that's a weird definition of mass. I thought mass was the amount of a substance, and it is, right? So all substances are made of electrons, protons, and neutrons. All ordinary substances are made of those three things, and each one of those has mass. So really, in physics, the definition of mass is really this. It's just, it's, it's the M, it's the, uh, course, or it's the um, proportionality constant between force and acceleration. And you may also say, all this is, this is just saying this, right. This is, where this is what mass is. It's called inertial mass because the state of motion is called inertia and mass is telling you how much your state of inertia changes when you apply a force. We'll get more detailed into different ways to define mass later, but for now, I'm telling you that's what it is. It's simply a property that tells you how much something accelerates when you apply a force. Right? And to check, here have something, it has a mass, trust me, and if I apply a force, we'll see it accelerate, second law, so here's the force and it accelerates. It's actually kind of hard to apply a uniform force with your hand, right? It's sort of hard to really imagine acceleration increasing, but that's pretty much what it looks like. So that's the beginnings of how to think about force in terms of Newton's first two laws. Now I'm going to take you on a tour de force. We are going to go through many different kinds of forces and see how they act and see how to handle them.